In square one, you started with a theory and worked your way through the process. You selected your variables, picked a hypothesis, and in square five, you decided to conduct an experiment. When you're in the process of choosing who to study, you're in square six. The participants in a study are called subjects. You could think of it as a monarchy, where there is a ruler and subjects. Or you might think of subjects as specimens you examine. They are subjects of interest. But I think those in a study are subjects in the sense that they are subjected to conditions beyond their control. Who will your subjects be? There are lots of choices. You could study dogs or birds or fish or dolphins. But let's say you're going to study a really complex species, humans. Having decided on studying people, you now have to get yourself some. The best choice, from a theory point of view, would be to study everyone. It'd be great if you could study the entire population of the world at once. Besides being a tad expensive, studying everyone at the same time is unreasonable. So when it comes to studying the entire world, it's probably better to select a sample. A sample is a smaller segment of a larger group. It doesn't have a set size. It's a relative comparison. Canada is a sample of the world population. It is also the population from which you could select a province. So country, province, city, or neighborhood could be a sample or a population. Think of it as a series of nesting boxes, one inside the other. No matter who you select, it will be a sample of something and a population of something else. If you can't afford to test the whole population of interest, select a sample from that group. Choose a sample of the group you want to generalize to. The key is to not generalize farther than your sample will allow. If you only want to study fifth graders in your town, that's your population. You can't use that data, without some reservations, to generalize to all fifth graders in the world. But if your interest is only in your fifth graders, there's no problem. If you want to generalize to fifth graders throughout Canada, you must sample Canadian fifth graders, not fourth graders in Florida. The main reason for using a sample instead of a population is money. It's more expensive to study an entire population than a sample. But if you're studying a small group, don't be cheap. Include the whole population. In business, you either study the dealers who are selling your widgets or the people who are buying them. If you're trying to survey your dealers, include all of them. What you gain in dealer involvement will far outweigh the cost of the survey, because everyone likes to be included. If you're trying to survey millions of customers, including all of them might be cost prohibitive, but include as many as you can. How big should a sample be? As big as possible. There are formulas for calculating the minimal size for a given effect, but in general, ignore them. Don't settle for minimal. Get as many subjects as you can for the time and money you're willing to spend. There's no downside to having a larger sample than you need. Having a smaller sample can hurt you. It might give you really weird results. But when it comes to picking people, more is always better. You've got your variables, handedness and intelligence. And because you have limited funds, you now know you're going to use a sample. The next step is to select your victims.